Hi, it's uh, Paul Beck with, uh, from the University of Ottawa. So uh, this particular video was inspired by a bunch of uh, questions that I've been getting from Facebook friend, friends on the uh, weather. So basically the first question, which is the title of the video, um, is from Milam. What the F is wrong with the weather? So Milam's in Oregon, Eastern Oregon, and uh, they just had two feet of snow, which is very unusual. Um, and some massive west coast storm came through and uh, the meteorologists, the weather forecasters got it all wrong. So what's going on? Well, basically, um, the jet streams, uh, maybe they're changing character. Maybe we're getting a change in um, a pattern shift. You know, the shift that we did have was uh, very high ridges over Alaska, trough over North America, and then up ridge over Alaska, over Labrador, and then, you know, massive high-speed high winds going over to the UK, um, bringing moisture from the ocean, and then when it goes over the colder, con the colder island of the UK, huge amounts of precipitation flooding them out. Um, so we've had this massive, uh, really warm air ocean water off the west coast of North America, which is aiding and causing that ridge to form, deflecting the jet. So, um, you know, it looks like there may be a pattern shift. It's, it's too early to tell. I mean, we did have, instead of the jets carrying uh, moisture, uh, rain and snow up into Alaska, um, they've come further south. So they, uh, you know, nailed, uh, you know, regions south of Alaska and also Northern California got uh, nice drenching, uh, nice uh, torrential rains uh, such that uh, one of some of the reservoirs like Folsom I believe uh, the water levels rose eight feet in a couple days from this so you know what's happened thus far is basically a cup of water in a huge bucket the deficit is a bucket you know a cup goes in too early to tell if, it, if it's a pattern shift and continues uh, you know who knows maybe we'll have record flooding in, in California um, you know this is what you get with weather weirding um, but the, the flooding, the, 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 um, the drought in California is severe. It's a 300 year drought. California is the breadbasket of the nation. Um, so, you know, crop losses, uh, I've heard figures as high as 10 billion. Um, I don't know if that's true, but, uh, you know, food prices are going to go up across the country, uh, you know, across North America. I mean, it's in the world. I mean, it's, if, if we've had these severe losses, as, as, I've, as I've heard. Um, and uh, like I say, it's a breadbasket of the nation. Um, you know, that will probably, you know, perk up a lot of people, get them interested in learning about what's going on with these crazy weather patterns and climate change. Um, you know, as far as the UK storms are going, um, you know, they have the Thames barrier, right? But that protects London from storm surges coming the other way, from, from storm surges, you know, ocean storm surges. You know, unfortunately, this heavy rain is, uh, you know, north and uh, west of London is uh, going onto saturated ground, causing flooding. This pulse of water is causing the Thames to overflow its banks and it's heading towards uh, London. So they're, they're in, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have, this is a very costly event. I mean, the economy is suffering from this big time. You know, you don't hear too much about those aspects. It's about, you know, the people that are being affected. But... Uh, Anyway, so these storms, uh, you know, who knows, if there is a pattern shift over with the jets over North America, you know, they could move, end up moving north or south of the UK, giving them a bit of a break. We'll see what happens. You know, I was asked uh, about summers, you know, what's happening with summers? How hot is it going to be in the summer? Um, well, there is a paper that just came out that's project, predicting that there, the, there will be there will be an El Nino towards the end of 2014. If this happens, if this uh, indeed happens, um, then that will raise, uh, you know, if it's anything like the 1998 powerful El Nino, um, it could raise uh, temperatures, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 degree type thing, which doesn't sound like a lot, but is very significant. So we could, you know, start getting these record warm uh, temperatures. Now, why, um, so the idea with that is that the trade winds are stronger, so the, the ocean water in the Pacific is being pushed over to the West Pacific, and so it would need these trade winds to weaken, and then that water will slosh over 
and the warm water that's stored, you know, a couple hundred meters down, 100, 200 meters down on the West Pacific will will come to this, will rise to the surface, and uh, we'll have this massive event. So, you know, but the um, so the equator, um, you know, uh, is this going to happen? I'm not so sure because the temperature gradient, um, you know, the Arctic's warm warming so much that less heat's moving there. So the equator's warmer. You know, most of that warmth goes into water evaporation, which is latent heating, which, uh, you know, increases uh, the, the, there's more uplift of the air, there's more convection, stronger convection, so that lowers the pressure at the surface, so just north, just south, the higher pressure, the, um, and combined with the lower pressure at the equator means a stronger pressure gradient, so the trade winds are stronger. So for the trade winds to relax, causing this El Nino, um, it would require quite a shift in the pattern. Um, not sure if that's going to happen. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Deborah was saying, within this year, can the jet streams change back to a more benign state, or within ten years? You know, and can this happen without geoengineering, or do we have to have geoengineering? Well, basically, the jets. Uh, we've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere. We've changed how the atmosphere responds to heat, how it traps heat. So we're trapping a lot more heat. We're getting the warming, um, overall warming, um, and uh, you know we're changing the temperature differences to the poles and between the poles and the equator, North Pole and equator, and we're getting contorted jets. So so no, the jet streams aren't just going to go back to where they were before on their own. In fact, as the sea ice and snow cover declines, the jets will um, get more fractured. Or perhaps even get locked to the base to the land due to the land sea uh, um, uh, temperature contrast. So they could become even more persistent. Um, I expect to see ice and snow cover declines. That we'll see a rise in extreme weather events. I think this is just we're scratching the surface. I think this is just the be you know we're we're I think it's going to get a lot worse. We're going to see a lot worse, and. Uh, you know, we've been geoengineering, putting fossil fuels into the atmosphere is changing the chemistry of the atmosphere. That's geoengineering, okay? It wasn't planned, it just happened, byproduct of, of civilization, byproduct of industrial growth, you know, byproduct, you know, due to the high energy density of, of uh, coal and oil and natural gas, you know, uh, we can transition, we need to transition, we need to slash the fossil fuel emissions, we don't have any choice. You know, um, and we're still going to have this massive change. You know, maybe we pass a tipping point in the Arctic. I think we need to regionally cool the Arctic. Google anthropogenic Arctic volcano. You know, you can see some of my views on it. But you know, and that uh, how is it going to? You know, these massive changes. Uh, they, it's the food supply that is is the weak point. It's our weak point. Um, Cindy was saying we're getting a lot more ice events. So she's in the mid US, I believe. You know, we are getting more ice, ice events. I mean, we're getting these wavy jets. Think of the jet stream as like a flower with petals. So the petals are extend for as far south, and that's the cold air. And then between the petals, extending far north, is the warm air. So this petal flower with about seven petals centered on the Arctic is slowly rotating around from west to east. And as the petal crosses your location, it's super cold. As you go between petals, it's super warm. So we're transitioning from far below freezing to above freezing, significantly above freezing. Um, and uh, we're basically uh, passing through near zero. So we're, you know, we get precipitation and we're near that point, we're getting freezing rain. So yeah, we're getting a lot more variability in the type of precipitation, a lot more freezing events, you know. Um, just talk to people in Slovenia. They had 150 millimeters of freezing rain. Um, you know, it coated, it, it, I mean, the big ice storm in 98 in North America, you know, Eastern North America was 100 millimeters. So, you know, this, uh, in Slovenia, they lost, they had damage, severe damage on 50, 40 to 50 percent of their, their trees. And now, it, now it's warmer than, than normal there. Um, you know, what are some of this, um, some of the solutions? Well, Sam Carana, C-A-R-A-N-A, -A, um, has a very interesting site, climateplan.blogspot.org. Have a look at his uh, stuff. He's put a lot of thought into, you know, over many years into our climate plan. What do we need to do? 
Um, Robin in New Zealand said they've had the coldest January uh, ever. Uh, meanwhile, in Australia, their neighbor, they've had the warmest January ever. So what's going on? Well, the jet streams in the Southern Hemisphere have been passing, uh, you know, as they pass just uh, south of Australia, so it's warm north of them. Australia is really warm. Um, they kind of do a vortex thing around the continent, and so they have some northward component on the east side of Australia, and that brings up, uh, that forces ocean currents to move from south to north past New Zealand, so those, that's cold water, so, so that explains that type of situation. I did have a video on, you know, southern hemisphere changes from Arctic sea ice decline. Um, Rasmos was saying, uh, what about runaway uh, global warming feedbacks, worst case scenarios? Um, yeah, worst case scenario, you know, we're in a, I mean, I think we're in an abrupt climate change. How quickly can the climate change? Well, in the paleo records, uh, we've had uh, five, six degrees C average global temperature rise in 13 years, a decade to two decades. You know, there's various papers on it. Um, the climate system is capable of changing very quickly. You know, in fact, you know, look, I mean, all, for the last two, three months, uh, you know, we've had huge temperature anomalies, positive 20 degrees C over the Arctic, minus 20 degrees C over North America. This represents huge mixing. You know, what will the ice cores in, in, in Greenland show, you know, in, in 50 years, uh, you know, if this is a persistent type thing? I mean, will they, that's a 20 degree change in a year, right, in that particular region. So, so you know, to get such a massive change, I think we would need to get a significant ramping up of methane. We're, we've, we've got a ramping up of methane, there's no question, from the ocean floor sediments and from the permafrost bordering the Arctic Ocean. Um, but how significant is this? How quickly can it come up? I think it can come up very fast. You know, many people think it can't, but, uh, you know, we'll see. Um, and uh, so I think I'll end uh, there for now. I've answered a bunch of questions, and I'll do another video on the overall system. Thank you.